Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of Lydia, starring Miss Helen Hayes, Hall of Fame. Here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. On this Easter Sunday evening, we bring you a biblical story from the life of Lydia, woman of Philippi, the dramatic account of a wealthy Greek businesswoman who risked her life to save the Apostle Paul. And we're especially proud to star in the title role one of the great ladies of the American theater, Miss Helen Hayes. And now here is Frank Goss. Every word you use paints a picture of you. The right words can add charm and brightness to that picture. That's why so many people choose Hallmark cards to express their personality and messages to friends. For Hallmark cards are carefully designed to carry the thoughts you want to send, to say what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And the Hallmark and Crown on the back says, too, that you care enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with MGM, producers of Executive Suite, starring William Holden, June Allison, Barbara Stanwyck, Frederick March, Walter Pidgeon, Shelley Winters, Paul Douglas, and Louis Calhoun. And now Mr. Barrymore brings you, transcribed, tonight's true story... Starring Miss Helen Hayes on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. In the first years following the death of Christ, his apostles traveled far and wide, telling the world the glory of his resurrection and of the life eternal. And so one of them, Paul by name, came to Philippi, chief city of Thrace, an important Roman colony. And in this city, there lived a wealthy businesswoman, and her name was Lydia. I am searching for the captain of this vessel. I am told his name is Palo. Search no longer, unknown Pharaoh, you have found Palo. And you may drink with him. I came here to speak to him. Find someone else, woman, I am drinking. This vessel was to be loaded and to sail by dawn. It is high sun time now. What has my vessel to do with you, and who are you, woman? I am a Roman citizen, Greek, and the owner of the merchandise this vessel is to carry. My name is Lydia of Philippi. Proud name, a proud woman. Why do my goods still rest on the dock bleaching in the sun? Claudius Caesar will hear... Well, hear of this, I know, and I will point out to him or his soldiers as I point out to you the fault is not mine. This is not the only vessel that is idle and unmanned of crew and workers. Where are the men, the crews, the workers? They've all gone to listen to a traveler. A traveler? Yes. Traveler is of the following that believes in the resurrection of the man named Christ. He spoke to others I have known in Galatea and Mycenae. A Christian? I have heard of this new religion. It is the same trouble they are stamping out everywhere. And the more they stamp, the more it grows. You defend it, Greek? I do not defend it. I wonder at it. Any man would. Say that in his lifetime, before he was crucified at Calvary, he worked wonders, healed the sick, raised the dead, himself included. Lies, all lies. Of course they are lies. They say this one they all listen to can also heal. Doctors can only heal with herbs and invocations to the proper God. This man is a single God and a single faith. I am repeating what they tell me, dear madam. Enough. Where does this traveler speak his blasphemy, and what is his name? You will find him by the banks of the river. He is from Tarsus. He is an apostle, and his name is Paul. For in him we live and move and have our being. We are his offspring. Do not search for him in a temple, nor look for his likeness as in gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. 
Where is he to be found? I repeat, who is your God and where is he to be found? Who asks? I, Lydia of Philippi, I ask. You are the one called Paul? I am Paul. Tell me of this God I cannot see, Apostle. He is everywhere. He is the God that made the world and all the things therein, the Lord of heaven and earth. He lives not in a temple made with hands. He is in the temple of yourself, Lydia. Yes. Fools! Idiots! Our God, the ones we all know, ensure your peace. His God brings only unrest and takes you from your work. You waste your time and yourselves listening to him. Or can he tell you a way to fill your stomachs without work? I tell of a way for them to fill their hearts and their souls. Sit, Lydia, and rest a while, and be one of us. And listen to this heresy about a God I cannot find. Why do you stare? Perhaps he is within you now without your knowing it. Look for your God, Lydia, and then you will see him. Sharp, exquisite, exquisite lady, welcome. Your flattery is wasted on me, Nestor. Flattery is never wasted, dear lady. What would you have of this poor and humble man? You are neither poor nor humble. I've heard tell that your wealth is beyond computing. I have also heard that you gained it by presenting to the superstitious and the gullible a young girl who interprets the future. A soothsayer. I have been privileged to translate Mythia's thoughts to those who ask. You wish to learn of your future? Mythia! She's gentle and childlike. See? Come, come forward, Mythia. I have heard she is dumb. Is she without tongue? She is with tongue, but it will not move. Not since her birth. Is that true, Mithia? See? She nods her head to say yes. Mm. Sit, dear lady, sit and put questions to her. I will define every nod of her head for I you. I am not here about the future, Nestor. I notice that your shop and the shops of others are uncrowded this day. Even as my goods lie profitless on the dock. True, true. All have gone to hear the lies of the apostle. He's a Christian, a lawbreaker. I am a Greek, but you are a Roman citizen. You can prefer charges. And I shall. But Roman law demands proof before action can be taken. Ah, you have some delightful plot to silence the apostle? Yes. He can be silenced with this silent girl. Bring your mythia and follow me. <laughs> You are certain they are not hostile. I am certain the apostle will be in a Roman jail before night. Hail, believer of Christ. You have returned, Lydia. Yes, I have returned, and I have brought this girl with me. Forward, Mithya, forward. She is dumb since birth. She wishes her tongue loosened so that she may speak aloud and praise your Lord. Her name is Mithya. Is this so, Mithya? She nods. Do you wish to use your voice to praise God? Lydia, tears grow large in her eyes. Do you believe in one God and one life? She nods again. Yes. If your God heals all ills, Apostle, he would heal Mithia, would he not? I know not for what purpose you brought her here, but she is already healed. She has found her Lord. Then let her find her voice, Apostle. You have told me you can cure any ill with your faith. I cure no ill. I spoke of my Lord and my God. 
Then entreat him for her. Ask your God to let her speak. She is asking God herself. She is proclaiming in her heart that she believes in her resurrection and in the life eternal. He has succumbed to the trap, Lydia. Look, he touches her throat and her lips as though in anointment. <laughs> if she does not speak, you have a charge. I am a witness. Can you speak, Mythia? Can you speak now of your love for God? I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to be heard. I... I... I can speak of my love for God and of His love for man. Please, Lord, 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 L
Not like coins I could have, but uh, tinkling. What do you want of me, Nestor? I heard you have embraced the new religion. You were there. You saw the power of his faith and the glory of God, as did all the others. The one named Paul, he stays in your house? The apostle is here from time to time. Why do you ask? Exquisite Lydia, this uh, Mithya, she was my soul sayer, remember? I interpreted and I became rich. And do you recall the day you came to me with a scheme to expose the apostle? Yes, Nestor. And I am ashamed. Ashamed that you helped steal my livelihood? What? It was you, Lydia, who took the girl to Paul. It was Paul who did this to me. What are you saying? That I, Nestor, a Greek, have charged him with theft. But even now the soldiers have taken him to the marketplace. <laughs> if you hurry, exquisite Lydia, you may be in time to see the apostle die. <laughs> It has been the most interesting afternoon, dear Lydia. Answer me. The magistrate presented the apostle to the people, and I presented my charges. They are now debating the sentence. Ah, they bring him out now. His arms are bound to the rod. Oh, yes, yes, as it should be. He has violated Roman law. While the verdict is being justly determined, at my suggestion, they will flog him. No! Ah, that's what it is. Oh, oh dear Lord. You whimper, yet he is silent. Are you in more pain than he, Lydia? They will kill him before he's even tried. I must intercede. And what can you do? The proconsul, Claudius Caesar. I am influential. I am a Roman citizen. Wait, dear lady, wait and think. You place yourself in danger if you intercede on the apostle's behalf. You might suffer his same fate. No, oh, I must help him. I must. I am no referee in these religious bouts, Lydia. I have affairs of state to settle. He is an innocent man of great good. Listen to me, Claudius. Now he lies in a jail. His back is stripped of flesh where they have beaten him. Yet there has been no trial, no sentence. Yes, I'll call it to the attention of my officers. Now, if you will please be pleasant enough to allow me... I to... will allow you nothing. One moment, Lydia. You're speaking to a Caesar. For such speech, I hold your life in balance. I entreat for this man. I entreat for justice. And you make me consider the effrontery of the stories I've heard of you of late. Of how you, an important woman, a Roman citizen have been baptized in this Christian faith and of how you embrace it and its followers. You see, I'm not unaware of your association with the apostle. But I still entreat you. I have no wish to do this. Once more, I ask you to leave here. The man is a Jew. He has no rights under the Roman law. He is fortunate they did not kill him before the verdict, only beat him. I am new in this faith, and I believe in it. I am yet too new to have learned the ways of submission and humbleness, and perhaps this is my sin. You call yourself a Caesar, but you are blind and stupid. Stop! I charge you with the crime of defiance. God! God! And Claudius Caesar, I charge you with the crime of blindness. The apostle of Christ is broken and bleeding in your jail. He has brought to your subjects and to your citizens a life and a belief that will make them whole. And yet you could allow him to be put to death. Much as I will allow you the same fate. God! What? Stay. What is it? Outside, Lydia. Outside. The building is not safe. Hurry! The very earth shakes with the injustice of this day. Yes. 
Yes, my Caesar? The worst seems to be over. Send soldiers out among these on the streets. Assure them the quake has ended. Call for the doctors and the priests to administer. Yes, my Caesar. And uh, this woman, wait. Lydia, I have forgotten my temper. Have you forgotten your plea? No, I could not. Take her to the jail. Well, man. Mighty Caesar, we must confine somewhere other than the jail. It was destroyed. What? And those in it? Well, speak, God. Where are the prisoners? Did they all perish? A most strange thing, my leader. Though the jail is a crumbled ruin, no prisoner is hurt. They all escaped? Send parties out immediately. No, they have not escaped, Caesar. They merely followed a prisoner named Paul to safety. They sit quietly and listen to his words of comfort. Are you certain? As I am a Roman soldier. Come, I must see this man. See him, see for yourself, Claudius. Then condemn him if you can. <laughs> Which is he named Paul? He sits on the rock above the others with his back to us. It is cruelly torn. I see. And rightfully so, O great Claudius. Who is this man? His name is Nestor. He is the one who has made the charge. Indeed, indeed. And though the earthquake came, I am still present to uphold the Roman law, under which I have little right, but under which I live. They sentence him to death. The law will be upheld, Greek. God... Bring the one named Paul to me. Your command, Caesar. You mean you will let a sentence of death be carried out against Paul? The charge still rests. But for not escaping when he had the opportunity, it might be commuted. It would be an injustice. He stole my livelihood. Silence! That is no form of mercy. His work is to spread the story of the resurrection and the life eternal. Languishing in a prison, you take away his work. I did not design his work. I interpret the law. Then I repeat my charge against you, Claudius. And I will make mine against you if you aggravate me further. Bow, prisoner. You are before Claudius Caesar. I bow to God, not to man. I say... Stay your hand. Paul. Paul, you should have escaped when the time was ripe. They still will sentence you. Fear not, Lydia. My life is yet to be lived in another kingdom and another world. <laughs> Comfort in the Lord. Woman of Philippi, comfort in the Lord. He, his blasphemy, Caesar. See how he is. Let me look on this man. God, the documents, the charges. If you confirm the sentence as it stands, then confirm your charge against me and put me to death also. And let the city know of your injustice. She pleads for him, but she pleads against Roman law. You are. Saul of Tarsus. I was. An officer in the Roman army. I was. You persecuted the new faith, yet you have embraced it. I have lived it from the moment when God asked me to. Paul, a persecutor? Like you, Lydia, I once persecuted. And like you, I believed and repented. What of the charge? What of the charge, Caesar? <sighs> there is no charge. This man is a Roman citizen. He cannot be charged by a Greek. Release him. But this cannot be. And take this man away. Come. Injustice! 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 Saul, I... I know not what faith you hold inside of you. I know I have seen it this day. And you will see it again, Claudius. The Lord is everywhere. Take him to your home, Lydia. He may stay in Philippi and do as he wishes. Farewell. By bringing him to me, you have served the Lord. And you will spread his word. And you, Lydia? My life is for my God, and my home is for all his servants and all my goods. I will learn my faith by serving. And be at Yes, Paul. Now, I am a chief. And Paul, the apostle, went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And he stayed there many days, 
and he spake unto the people. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, many men clave to him and believed in the word of the Lord. Miss Hayes and Mr. Barrymore will return in just a moment. Hasn't this happened to you? You find in your mail an unexpected card from a friend, and a surge of delight goes through you. You think, what a grand person she is, how nice of her to remember. And your whole day becomes brighter. And the best part of it is, you get that same glow when you send the card, too. Thoughtfulness warms both the giver and the receiver. That's why it's such a good idea to stop at a fine store where Hallmark cards are featured and choose a variety of cards for your friends. Not just for their birthdays, anniversaries, and big occasions. For those, of course. But there are many, many Hallmark cards designed, too, for the little occasions. For those unnoticed days that can be made memorable and happy by your remembering. Because you choose Hallmark cards, you pay your friends the added compliment of going to a fine store and personally selecting the right design for each individual taste. The right greeting to say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And the familiar hallmark and crown on the back tells them, too, that you care enough to send the very best. And now, here again is Lionel Barrymore. Helen, when we started planning our Easter Sunday program for the Hallmark Hall of Fame, we wanted to give our listeners something special. And I can think of nothing more special than having the opportunity of hearing your performance tonight. Why, thank you very much, Lionel. I'm very happy you invited me to take part in such a beautiful story. It certainly was a fitting choice for Easter Sunday. But then all of the stories you have on the Hallmark Hall of Fame are most interesting. I guess because they're always about real people. What story are you planning for next week, Lionel? Next week, Helen, a little-known story from the life of Stradivarius, that remarkable genius who lived centuries ago and created the finest musical instruments in the history of the world. You will hear this unusual story next week. Oh, how wonderful. I'll surely be listening. <laughs> Good night, Lionel, and I hope the joy of Easter stays with you always. Thank you, Helen, thank you. Until next week, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our producer director is William Prude. Our script tonight by E. Jack Newman. Featured in our cast were Jan Owen, Bernard Lendro, Santos Ortega, Louis Van Ruten, Everett Sloan, and Ted Osborne. Listen to the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television next Sunday when we bring you an exciting true incident from the life of Marquis de Lafayette. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you until next week at the same time when you'll hear a true story from the life of the world's foremost violin maker, Antonio Stradivarius. And on the following Sunday, May 2nd, you'll hear a dramatic incident from the life of the famous former manager of the New York Yankees, Miller Huggins, as told by Joe DiMaggio on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.